How's it going folks? Cam Griffin from Binui Family Grazing. Welcome back to the channel where every Sunday I try and put out a regenerative grazing, grass farming related video. I'm just down shifting the heifers and the cows along the creek at the moment. We're, we're almost done our first rotation and it was about a 125 day cycle so that means the first paddock that we grazed back at the other lease farm has been sitting and recovering and regrowing for about 125 days. But I thought I'd pop up a little interview that I did a while ago with Charlie Arnott down at the Maya Grazing Wilmot Cattle Co Field Day in Ebor, northern New South Wales. I managed to win a ticket to it and so I went down and it was a great weekend. Got to hear a lot of good um, presenters and, and speakers talk about the way that they're doing things in different parts of Australia. And it was freezing, absolutely freezing couple days and I was in the Hilux, um, just had the heater on trying to warm up and I saw Charlie walk behind the back of the back of the ute and um, I had the, the, the GoPro there and I thought, oh good, I'll just see if he wants to hop in and have a bit of a yarn about, you know, a few things, have a bit of a chat, pick his brains and um, he was willing enough, he was a, a really great fella and um, there's a few nuggets of gold in there. So I'll put that up, I um, uh, hope you guys enjoy it, if you, you know, you want to listen to more of his stuff, he does the Regenerative Journey podcast, which is probably one of the bigger Regen Ag podcasts here in Australia, um, and it's really well worth a listen, so yeah, here's the interview. So you see it on that side? Yeah, but but I think it, it does, it, it like it's bigger than that. That's like Yeah, that's just like, gives you a bit of an idea. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Like, so. Anyway, so, so we're, welcome we're guys. On, mate. We're on, mate. Thank you so much for being here, Cam. It's a pleasure, Guys, mate. I'm an honor. I've been waiting. No. I've been waiting for you to call me and get me to do this for years. No, guys. So, um, <laughs> I'm lucky enough to be joined um, now by one of the the great minds in regenerative ag and host of the um, number one holistic farming <laughs> podcast uh, in, in, in Australia, in the world, in I the mean. world, <laughs> in the universe. Um, and yeah, I mean, in the in the in the front seat of my Ute, I mean, he's taken the time to sit down and have a a quick chat. Um, it's very, yeah, very clean. Yeah, it is. Like Says a lot about it, man. Till, yeah. Oh, my wife cleaned it. Just oh no, no, <laughs> oh, no, I, no, you, no, no, no I cleaned it. No, you just gave the game. No, 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 that's all right. I, I got to give her credit. She watched this. <laughs> um, but yeah, I will just thought I'd pick his brains a bit. Um, for for. 10 minutes or so while I had him here. Um, so yeah, thanks for thanks for joining me, Charlie. Mate, I've got to say, you bailed me up there before, and um, as I said to you a minute ago, um, it's exactly how I started, and it was a video, and it was just bailing people up and going, can I just ask you some questions and get them to tell stories, and you, that's that's a courageous thing to do, and you've done it, and that's yeah. awesome. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. Yeah. I hope I can live up to the expectation. Oh, no, you have. <laughs> um, I, I, it's, it's well worth mentioning that we are at the My Grazing Wilmot Field Day at the moment. Um, yeah, it's been an awesome day. Um, yeah, Charlie spoke, that was great. Um, do you have any highlights from the day, from any of the speakers that you uh, had? Well, general highlight was, Cam, that the, the theme was natural capital and mm -hmm. I guess um, exploring that whole concept, um, big picture and small picture. And I, it, that just went on, is that, is that still going? Is that right? Yeah, that's, oh, that's all cool. good. <laughs> just checking. Uh, me and technology, mate, yeah. not good friends. Um, so, so the general theme of natural capital was great that everything came, came back to that. Because, you know, um, uh, the Maya Grazing, this is their fourth one they've done here, I think, and it's yep. been um, lots of different topics. And uh, But just having a theme this year was was great, yep. and, and and which gives sort of, makes it very approachable for generally farmers who are here yeah. to then go, well, this actually isn't as crazy and weird and wild as it sounds. And was it was bringing the practical application of, you know, good grazing management and ecological yep. health to a, what does that actually mean? to improve natural capital. So that was made pretty clear yeah. to me. It was good. Yeah. And it's really interesting. I thought at the end, like the 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 company like Packhorse who mm. are, are looking for really big backing to kind of to get going and get I think they said, yeah, two two billion dollars worth of Well two uh, two million hectares. Two million hectares. And they reckon they're gonna need five billion dollars. Five billion. Yeah. So that's that's a that's a lot of yeah. land and money. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. But that's good. That's that's ha they're having a red hot go. Yeah, and it, it's it's good to know um, that we're moving in that, that kind of direction, I suppose. Well, and that also that, that you know, like um, Nick's not from the land. Yeah. Um, you know, he's jumped in there, and um, 
uh, Elaine, uh, yep. who's the scientist, like yep. you know, they're, they're coming together with no doubt a whole lot of other um, people on the team, yeah, to do some really good things. And I think it's yeah. you know they're doing it well. I mean, I I had only heard of them a few months ago, and yep. it's like they've just gone bang, yep. all this good stuff all yep. of a sudden, you know. So yeah, that's cool. No, it's awesome. Um, so thought if if you could just give a brief kind of description of where you guys are grazing, um, your mm. farm, um, yeah, Hannah Mino, yeah, um, I know. And yeah, yeah, I know. It, right? I have to come down do a, do a course. <laughs> I, the bio dynamics course, I will. Yeah. My, my Tom Lone and um, Annabelle, they did it, and they said it was great, so they went on. So oh, cool. Well, we we might do not the question you asked me, but we might be doing one at Kin Kin. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Which is yeah. to you, isn't it? Yeah. In yeah. a couple of months' time, we're working all that out. Yeah. Keep you posted. So we're at Burrawa. I grew up at yeah. Burrawa, which is a little mm. country town, sort of an hour and a half north of Canberra in New South Wales, down yeah. southern southwest New South Wales. And our approach to farming then was very conventional. Um, Dad, you know, conventional farming, lots of input, lots of output, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, and then some years ago, we, I had some epiphanies. Um, I had some pushes and shoves. Yeah. Um, yep. And changed what we did. So we yep. are now we are grazing cattle and sheep. We, we got out of sheep um, some years ago. Yep. Just to try and keep it simple. Yep. You know, cattle mouths on landscape is, you might argue, is less... Um, intense and, a, and, yeah. and you got more d sort of more wriggle room yep. um, you know you overgraze a paddock with sheep and you can do some yeah. interesting things so yep. that's pretty much what, we do, what we're doing there yep and how did you on that because I thought you guys just had cattle how did you find the the multi-species grazing was that was that really beneficial running them together parasite load type of yeah um, good question um more i can't say there's any negatives uh, um really not that i'm aware i can yeah. sort of think of but the yeah. positives were just sheer numbers of mouths yeah. on ground you know yeah. mouths and hooves so disturbance and just getting through mm -hmm. that pasture we were carving down 350 cows and about 1200 ewes were lambing in the same paddocks at the same time yeah. so and we actually didn't do much with them. We didn't go yep. check them every day, yep. and it was interesting. And I think the benefit of that was um, we we were it was a balance between kind of letting them do their thing um, and lamb and calve down yep. without too much disturbance and too many moves. Yeah. But also the sheer number meant that we did have to move them. You know, I think we were moving yeah. them probably once a week, which is you know yep. we usually move things once every couple of days. Yeah. But the multi-species thing. I think there was a lot of benefit in them literally being two different species. Yeah. yeah. You know, so it's not just for the grazing, I think yeah. it's for the socialising as yeah. well. Like yeah. just having them, like it's mm. one step closer to being a more natural environment where the species cohabitate yeah. areas and that sort of thing. Yeah. And I also think, just another point there, we had our heifers calving with our cows, which you don't yep. usually do. Yep. We didn't have any dramas with our heifers that year. Yeah. Uh, and I think one of the things that was beneficial was having those older cows with those younger heifers yeah there's some i don't know you know maternal maternal whatever. absolutely you know yeah. they're, they're showing them this they're teaching them that i don't know what it is but yes. i think there's some real there's something in that yeah and also just back to biodynamics we i'd sprayed those paddocks yeah. at easter with biodynamics yeah um after we would had a mob go through there and then it yep. just happened at three months later august september we graze those paddocks again yep um uh and I, I don't know, I just reckon that having put the biodynamics out before yeah. may have contributed, as well as the multi-species kind of thing, yep. to, I guess, the success that we had in terms of the, the, um, the lambing and the carving. Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't know, I, I, it, it, I, have, I, can't, I, can't, yeah. no, I can't say, oh, here's the science and here's yes. the numbers and whatever, but it just kind of felt good, and which is something we touched on there before about feeling, you know, farmers generally don't, yeah. we're not good at feeling stuff. No. You know? Feel we might feel crook, like, yeah. You know, no, but just being intimate. But, with but the... that's it. Having you know, having a, a having a, 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 an affair with a landscape, or yeah. being rom you know, having some romance yeah. there, or having that connection, or that gratitude, yeah. or that reverence is is something. So a lot of the things that we do and we talk about and we kind of advocate for, yeah, you know, is not always a whole lot of science. Yeah, no, that's, that's the bit that's awesome. missing. I reckon. Though, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I definitely agree. So and so back. Sorry, just to go back a bit on that. That transition for you guys from more so conventional to going, you know, farming more so in nature's image, was that gradual or is kind of just like a, a light bulb switched and you said, "We, I've got to do this." I've got to... Well, I guess the intention was pretty happened pretty quickly. Having done a grazing for profit course, yeah, and I literally, but in the middle, like day three or four, rang the, the guys at home, yeah, 
um, because I was an hour away yep. doing the course, and I said, "Those let's bop and box those mobs together." Yeah. Because I learned about grazing pressure and so on, and yeah, and so I was like, you know, because the questions they ask you are things like, "Why are you keeping your, you know, four-year-old cows separate from your five-year-old yeah. cows, or this and that?" And I was mm -hmm. like, "I actually don't know. Dad did." Yeah. I, yeah. I can't actually think of a good reason to do it. Yeah. So I was like, put them together, put them together. So, you know, and then that, that made a big di difference immediately without changing any fencing yeah. or doing a whole lot of infrastructure yeah. improvements. So the decision was pretty sharp. Yeah. Some of the some of the immediate things were immediate, you know, as in opening a gate. Yeah. That's pretty easy. Yeah. And then infrastructure went in. And we made a whole lot of mistakes too. Yeah. You did know. you like go... Just we cold, overgrazed. Cold turkey on the, on the chemicals? Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, we absolutely yeah. did. We... we um. Uh, I know that at that at, in that very year it was our last year that we cropped, but I had wheat. Yeah. Um, I think I had canola, and I had I'd, I was sowing lucerne. Yeah. And so we sowed the lucerne. We'd already sown the lucerne. That's why we sowed it in in autumn. Yep. Um, and we might normally have sprayed it with something to yep. get the <clears throat> get the grasses out. I just yep. left it. Um, the crops I just let them run to the to, yeah. to harvest. And um, and you know I got out of that paradigm yep. of going oh it's august i better spray that for this or yeah. that you know like that recipe yeah um yeah and i yeah i stopped abdicating responsibility of it to other agronomists and i just went yep bugger it i'm just gonna let yeah. it do its thing you know it's, so cold turkey was what we did yeah to some degree yeah i wouldn't say that's necessarily what you must do or should do it's yeah. more like it's again it's how what that feels yeah like for you and there are some things that you probably not shouldn't do cold turkey yeah. on you know? yeah 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 it was, it was it was awesome listening to Stuart and and talking about weeds to, today and you know how weeds yeah, yeah. well yeah weeds yep. but um the once you realise they have a purpose I think the amount of anxiety that can be lifted off graziers and farmers who who that's just spinning in their heads about what they're going to do with mm. you know the, the these this thistle whatever's coming up mm. the, if they could just slightly understand the landscape how much you know, pressure could be relieved from them. Um, and it, how he was talking about, you know, you know, where the 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 the, the worst to know when it comes to what to put in our body, you know, cattle and and ruminants and whatnot. They can smell. They know exactly mm. what they need. Mm. So just being, I guess, um, yeah, open minded to that. Um, yeah. Well, I, I mean, that, those weeds are some of the. I mean, that's why weeds are often, um, you know spiky or have you know they're kind of yes they're, they're often hard to eat mm. like like that black thistle, thistle there yep but it's they are spiky because they're nutritious yep you know so weeds and we're calling them weeds because we're used to calling them yep. weeds and, you know we like plants that uh in a in, in somewhere that we may not have wanted to be they're undesirables yep. or they're opportunistic but i mean yep. they're opportunistic that's a really good thing because there's an opportunity yeah. to jump in there, cover the ground, put a deep root tap a t tap root in, or, or yeah. accumulate nutrients, and provide nutrients to animals and to the landscape and to the soil. I mean, this is uh, you know, and they add to the diversity, as you yeah. as you well know. And yeah. you know, having broad leaves and grasses and forbs and all sorts of things in there, yeah. and letting the animals pick and choose. Yeah. You know, if you're doing it in a density that that means they can't be too choosy. Yeah. You know, there's yep. still got to be some, you know, sort of really yep. even, reasonably even kind of graze. Um, they're going to tuck it, and and as you said, they self medicate. Yep. You know, it's like wow, that bit of, I mean, I mean, you, you never probably call plantain a weed, but yep. it's you know like a, a cape weed, right? Yeah. Yep. Really high in protein. Yep. People go, oh, you know, sheep get shitty on it, and and it's yep. bad. It's like, of course, if that's all yeah. in the paddock is cape that's weed, it. they're going to get shitty on it. Yep. You know, so but if it but it contributes in, in into the the diet yeah. as it does it's high in protein yeah. and um it's spreading out you know that rosette just covers the ground it's like well thank you because it always comes up after a, yeah. a couple of dry years yeah right? thank yeah. you like patterson's curse came up for us a couple of years ago yeah straight up the spring after the late winter and spring of very dry period we had yeah and i did a video on that and was bloody two foot high and it was thick as in thin you know like it was stalky but yeah. a lot of them and i got no people going. Oh, bloody! You know, you're gonna. Have, it's gonna compete. It. There's gonna be nothing there. It's gonna be a disaster. You, how are you gonna control it? And I said, I'm yep. gonna control it by doing nothing. Yep. Graze it. Yeah. And I swear, I went back there pretty much to the day last year. So it was a year after yep. I'd done that first one, and I struggled to find a Patterson's curse. Really. I yep. honestly, there was purple the year before. Yeah. And I went, oh, there's one. One little piddly little flower popped up. It was like that succession. Yep. 
and the season provided an opportunity for the next thing to come. Yep. A lot of red grass was always going to come back through. Yep. More rye grass and prairie yep. grass. It was, it's fat. And once you start observing, yep. you know, and taking note and not going, I've got to kill you, yep. but go, I'm actually going to watch you and wonder and try and read the message, you know, and understand the message because yes. they are messengers. Yeah. Um, that makes farming fascinating. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I, I love what um, I think Jim Garrish might say it but great grazing for for what you want so mm. don't don't focus on the weeds focus on what you do want and that what you want to prune and and, and let come back and the cattle will trample so so i'm i'm, I'm wondering like would they you think they would have trampled a lot of that patterson's curse when you did a pass over or yeah you know? i don't know what percentage or yeah. proportion but they yeah. certainly um because that paddock also had a lower area where there was hardly any patterson's curse yeah. with more rye grass and and, yeah. and loosen and they could access both. So they get a mouthful of this, mouthful of that. Yep. But as that Patterson's curse, you know, at that point when it was flowering, it was not very palatable, but yep. underneath there was a whole lot of stuff. And then it sort of yep. wilted and, you know, yep. goes that sort of very dry, crusty yep. um, kind of kind of thing. And then yep. and then the red grass just came through it. So they may not have eaten much. They probably pushed a bit over, but it was not, but it created a microclimate yep. for that red grass, which is a perennial. It's, you know, mm -hmm. it's it, 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 it keeps coming back. And other perennials that have, I haven't seen there for a while and yep. other annuals yep. you know it dies it's about a foot and a half high this, this, this that year yeah other stuff was coming through being protected from you know some of that warmer and hot yep. summer sun copping a bit of rain here and there yeah paddo falls over bingo you've got another layer yep. of the next succession of, yep. of that year uh, and then you know things roll on and 12 months later it's like where's the paddo gone <laughs> it's done its job and it's it's awesome. like and, and nature recruited it to do a job back then in that year and then nature's gone thank you don't need you anymore yeah welcome whatever yep. else came along and that's really that's that's a that's a yep. that's really interesting yeah no that's awesome thanks for that um so i wanted to get you a bit of a i know you're, you're an advocate of the biodynamics kind of mm. way of farming and just wondering if you might be able to expand on that a little bit and maybe talk about, um, you know, briefly, not, not in too much definition. <laughs> I don't want people I, to turn I, off I, and go, I, what is this bloke talking about? No, okay. Um, no, no. Yeah, um, I, no, I can, I can do that. Um, so a bit of a, bit of a summary kind of thing. Yeah, I suppose. Um, just, yeah, a bit of a... Well, I, I guess there's, I mean, there's a theory of biodynamics in terms of um, and that's how we roll with our workshops is that we yeah. do morning theory and afternoon practice. So there are some principles really about, yeah. about biodynamics. Okay. And you know, we start with talking about, um, health of soil yeah. and the, the, the dynamic life and, and cycles and function of soil and nutrients and elements and all those sort of things and water and water. that's a bit of a, you know, soils 101 session. Yeah. Um, just to lay the foundation that, you know, if we can, if we can, um, contribute in a positive way by applying biodynamics um, yep. that we can stimulate biology stimulate all that soil biota yep. which you know which 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 then creates more life you yep. know and then yep. water holding capacity and so on so there's the basic sort of how do you improve soil and there's a number yep. of ways of doing it and um, biodynamics is one of them so and so the, I guess the difference between biodynamics and sort of other organic practices that enhance soil is that yeah through the use of um, uh, cow manure, which is not unique to other practices, but putting it in a cow horn. So one of the things we do is we put lactating cow manure into a horn and put it in the winter overnight, uh, yep. over, uh, put it in the ground over winter. Yep. And that is a like a nurturing period of the, of the year. So in summer, like in winter, there's more activity in the ground than there is up up up, up top. Yep. It's cold, you know, yep. up there. And yep. yes, there's there's not much growth. It's certainly boring. It depends on where you are in the world. Yep. But it's a it it creates and it composts that manure in that horn. And the horn is a vessel, uh, you know, a sort of a, um, a composting vessel. It does other things. There's some other kind of significance of the horn. It's yep. in a spiral, which is basically a vortex, which is something that is it helps connect. Essentially, biodynamics helps connect the plants, which is really what makes soil. Yeah. Plants grow on soil, but plants um, uh, um, plants actually make soil. It's connecting the plants with their origins, which is it's kind of the cosmos. Yeah. Okay. So this is yep. the kind of spooky wow stuff. So what we're doing, it's it's enhancing the relationship that 
we have as individuals yep and that plants have in the landscape with their origins and the yep. atmosphere and the soil below so yeah that's kind of a broad picture of the um the less tangible yeah the, the less substance kind of yep. related um principles of biodynamics yeah the practical side of it is we basically use a number of ingredients including cow manure basalt dust eggshell yep various herbs in yep. different forms to create dare i say a fertilizer yeah right? a soil activator that, yep. that comes in different forms and there's different ways you make these things generally from the stuff you have on your farm yeah and that's yep. one of the wonderful things about it it's very cost effective and um there's lots of you know anecdotal and and science based kind of yep. um results which identify the improvement you know yep. the rebalancing of soil the unlocking of nutrients in the soil the increasing of the biology the stimulation yep. um uh of 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 plant activity and again yep. if you get your plants active um, that'll feed the sugars into the yep. soil, which feeds your bugs, and then the whole system starts cranking up. Oh, yeah. So you can use biodynamics in isolation, yep. uh, or you can use it with anything. You can be growing basil yep. in your in your pot plant in your thing, or you can do it. So it's completely scale, yeah, completely scalable. It's you about can... using the principles. Yeah, it's so about you... putting it into your system that works for you. You don't have to buy a whole lot of fancy gear. Yeah, and spend years trying to work it out. Like we're advocates of eighty percent of something is better than one hundred percent of nothing. Yeah. Just get yeah. out there and try. Yeah, you know? definitely. And that segues really well, kind of into into my um my next question and my last one. So I know you. No, at, all good, mate. Um, but so so do you think that like for most great, I think grazers in particular. Well, I I think in a way just because of the connection with animals, and and do you think for us to kind of level up, so to speak, or take our grazing to the next level? Do you think that reaching you know that kind of s spiritual connection mm. um with our landscape our native animals our our herd mm. in which you know if, if you are moving once daily twice daily leading them to nourishment across the landscape do you think that that type of that that type of connection is what can um really kind of take our operations forward and to the next level totally without a doubt i mean you think of all the indigenous cultures around the world um, who didn't drive tractors and yes. use chemicals and spray? I mean, they were, and some would say, well, that's all they had, and that's right, but it worked. You know, they fed, the indigenous peoples of Australia fed, you know, they had convergences of 10,000 people yeah. for, two, for a week or two at a time. Yeah. They grew a lot of food, yeah. and they did it without all these chemicals and all these, you know, machines. And, and yes, they had a lot of labour, and that was their, that was part of their yeah. life and their day and yeah. their activities. But my point is, I had a deep connection with the landscape, landscape, yeah, and and you know, which I believe is it grows better food, you yeah. know, because nature is a is a multi layered, multi faceted, amazing, energetic, yeah, ener you know, it's mother nature, right? It's yeah. a, it's a it's an entity. Every everything has an intelligence. Every one of those trees out there has its own intelligence. There's an intelligence of, of, of that particular species of tree you know yep. there's a collective thinking yeah and as with animals or kangaroos you know yes. so so you know as a as a landscape manager we can choose to ignore all that yep. and just be very prescriptive and you know somewhat of industrial mindset yep. and just look at what we see and go that's a resource yeah i'm just going to use it it's it has no intelligence or uh, you know there's this kind of there's yes there's, there's less of a connection in that way and it is it, it's mechanical it's like yeah i'm gonna Plow that paddock and plant that seed and harvest that and, yep. and then sell it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We can do that, and you can grow food, and you can eat it, and yep. you can be in a business. But I think that the it's very mechanical. It there's very little connection to the landscape and to nature, and I think that 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 affects the quality of the food and affects yep. us as in individuals. We need connection, yep. not yep. just connection to each other. Yeah. Connection to our environment in a really compassionate way. I drive around my paddocks at Hannah Minow yeah. knowing the crimes I've committed yeah. over the many years yeah. before I changed what I yeah. used to do. Now when I go out there, whether I'm spraying biodynamics or I'm just moving cattle, it's a for me, there's a there's a deep um, need to show compassion yeah. and it's an opportunity to be compassionate and be really grateful for what it is allowing me to do, to express myself, to be creative and to um, produce food yeah. in that environment and, and, and manage it in a way that 
that I know through training experience and lots yep. of stuff ups. Yeah. Um, I can do a better job by by you know using biodynamics and, yep. and using different techniques. But yeah, you, you're absolutely right, Cam. You the and it's much more fun. Yeah, it is yes. much more compelling. Yeah, when you go outside and you can literally chat with a tree, right? Yes, and just acknowledge the fact it's there. It's yep. it's beautiful. And I was I, well, I have a particular um, grandmother yellow box tree. Yep. at our at Hannah Mino, which yep. is enormous and it would be two or three hundred years old. Yeah, absolutely stunningly beautiful. And I yep. sat under it the other day for half an hour, and it was just really cathartic. And yep. you know. If you're running around and busy and all you're doing is turning yeah. that resource into a commodity to sell, yeah. you don't give a shit about that yeah. sort of stuff. But yeah. nature and all the elementals and the and the and the and the nature spirits out there and they they are out there out there. Definitely, they pick up on that stuff. I think so, and it, they will cooperate with you. Definitely, I I think that that's so true, and I think of it sometimes like um, that Avatar the movie. You know, how, yeah, I, and it, and it was definitely after hearing. Um, that uh, entomologist, I think Jonathan Lundgren um, from the States, but talking about how when um, there may be a locust attack, um, mm. say from, from, from these trees, uh, 10 kilometres away, they can send chemicals, you know, mm. th through the fungi underground, and they're, they're constantly transmitting mess messages mm. to each mm. other that, you know... It, it's there, and we go and stick a you know a, a big chisel plough straight through that mm. that that or a fungicide or yes. something. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that avatar was great, wasn't it? When they um, that tree of life or tree of love or whatever it yeah. was, and it was all these things, all the phosphorescent yes. kind of fingers went out into the roots, and it was like the thing was alive. And you know, James Cameron, um, you can you might question his 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 kind of view on eating meat, yeah, or not. Um, However, he, I reckon he hit the nail on the head there. Just that, yeah. just a connection that it, it gave us a really good example of what we could be. Not running around in loincloths and in the jungle and stuff, but just the fact that you know, by slowing down and having reverence and kind of, you know, just taking all that not so much seriously, but just appreciating our place yeah. in all that yeah. can have a profound effect on. On our lives, you know, yeah, um, and and being in nature is a kind of meditation, yeah. Um, I believe, and and and, you, and it's not about sitting there, you know, saying your oms and carrying on, which yep. is a lovely thing to do as well. Yeah, but just you know, your acts of compassion in your daily life with farming, with reverence, um, it's free. Yep. Yep. It makes it more fun, and I just think it's a really important thing. I mentioned before Dr. Patrick McManoway, right? Yep. Look this I up, guys. Dr. Be. Patrick McManoway does call... He, he he works with RCS here in Australia. He hasn't been out for a couple of years because he hasn't been able to fly. Yeah. He used to come out twice a year, and he has a subtle energy. He talks about subtle energy. And, yep. and there's a... Um, uh, I can't remember the name of the course, but look on the RCS okay. website. It'll be there. Okay. He is amazing. I've done two, the same one, but twice yep. over some years. And he talks about... It's very very similar to biodynamics in, in lots of elements of yep. it, that we are um, about having reverence and grace. He's yep. a big fan of grace. Yep. You know? And yes. um, so look him up. He's fantastic. Get to one of his courses. He lives half a year in Vermont, half a year in Edinburgh. Yeah. Um, and he is just I so just you know in awe of what he does. And he's he's at, he is in a constant state of grace himself. Yeah. Like it's almost like he's meditating the whole time, not yeah. silent, but he's just, yeah. he is just absolutely chilled and an absolute just delight. Just grateful to. Absolutely, he's yeah. just grateful. And, he's, yeah. and he knows his stuff and he douses. Like, yeah. he, you know, he, he sort of, yeah. he finds stuff and he, and one really interesting quick little story is we, when we did the course, I think it happened in both the courses, we, we all shared you know, dinner and meals yeah. at the um, one night. And he, he um, through, through intention. Yep. And for, Two glasses of wine, poured out of the same bottle, put his hand on one, like you go, oh, they're, they're the same, yeah, whatever it sure as. Put your hand, and he shows, he's going to put a hand on there, and he, and he puts some intention in into that to make it sweeter or dry yep. or whatever. You swear they're different glasses of wine. Yeah. And then we all had a go. We went, oh, you know, I'm going to make, oh, like a sweet sort of a thing. And, you know, <laughs> this might sound crazy. Yeah. People who are listening to this or watching it, go to a course and you'll, it'll blow yep. your mind. The power of intention, the power of just when you have a, yes. a sense of, of, of connection with even a glass of wine. Yeah. Right? It's I just and I just love that stuff. Yeah. So check him out. Um yep. Dr. Patrick McManaway. Yeah. And he talks about black water and 
um, running under houses and yep. the, the energetics of all that. And it's oh, and also spirits like you know, how to yep. how to rid rid landscape of energetics and um, yeah, uh, you know, getting getting people out of houses and that sort of yeah. stuff. Getting people back onto the land, I think. Yes. Yeah. Getting people back in the land <laughs> and getting but, people out who shouldn't be there, yeah. out of houses into where they should be. That yeah, sort of stuff. It's definitely. fascinating. Um, have you got time for one more question? Totally. Yeah. So, what advice would you give to um, a young person wanting to get into, you know, holistic agriculture, regenerative mm. agriculture, who's just starting out? Um, you know, maybe doesn't have too much knowledge. Yep. Um, and yeah, they, they might not have land. They're not going to inherit yeah. land. Um, how they could get involved, get started, and um... good question, Cam. Um, look, there's lots of things you can do. I, I, I guess to to steal that into a couple of things is, um, it depends on where you're up to. If you're already really motivated, yeah, then you've probably already read Call the Reed Warbler yep. by, by Charlie um, Massey. Yep. Um, Bruce Pascoe, um, Dark Emi is another good one. Yep. Gabe Brown, Dirt to Soil. Yep. Um, Nicole Masters, um, For the Love of Soil. Yep. Um, there's a lot of reading you can do. There's more and more books, and I think that's a fantastic place to start. So that's yep. pretty easy. You get to an audible yep. or, or read, read them. Um, I would, it depends on where, again, where you're up to. If you haven't done much work on farms, I would yep. find yourself a, a mentor, a as in a mentor, farmer, yep. a good mentor on farm. Um, uh, just offer your time for, you know, yep. uh, bed and feed or whatever, whatever arrangement you come to, um, yep. and get some on ground, on farm experience. Just so you know what it's like yep. to move animals and to yep. have some, you know, responsibility and, and literally get into nature and start feeling and having reverence for and compassion for nature. Yes. Do that. Um, there are a number of courses you can do. Do our biodynamics workshop. Yep. Um, there are holistic management courses with, say, yep. someone like Brian Warburg. Yeah. Um, RCS, if you're starting out, RCS, uh, their grazing for profit, is it's a week long and it's it's um, it may not be for the person who's just starting. Yeah. Um, Brian might be more for that because it's, um, it, uh, my sense is it, it would be more applicable for yeah. the, for those just kicking off. Yeah. Um, and what else would I say to that? I mean, there's plenty of good podcasts. Yeah. I've done fifty of more now, yes. and, and they're they're yeah, you know, I trust they're interesting, and and that gives Definitely. people a sense of not just farming and kind of what that's about in, re, in a regenerative way, but also how um, through food and farming and health and environment, all these yeah. things are connected. Yeah. Um, what else could they, I suggest they do? I don't, I don't know. I don't, yeah, I think if you had to, if you had to sort of go, like, I'm going to do formal study. Yeah. Or I'm going to go and do work on a farm. Yep. I reckon I'd say go and work on a farm. Yeah. And get, and, yeah. And, and, and make the mistakes. Yeah. Learn from the farmer or the mentor. Yep. Read your books. Listen to podcasts. Talk to people. Yep. Make a few mistakes. Ask plenty of questions. And I yep. think that's a good place to start. You don't have to have land. Yeah. Um, you don't have to have inherited a property. You don't yep. have to have been a farmer. Sometimes being, not being a farmer is a really good thing because yep. you haven't dragged the legacy of your childhood or your yep. family's farming paradigms into your career yep. in your life. So for those who aren't farming, um, you know, I commend anyone who wants to get into farming that isn't a farmer. Yeah. And there's many, many more of them, and there's many more opportunities. And we're actually looking forward to and. You know, we encourage people who are not farming to get in because you bring a yeah. whole different raft of skills and experience. Yeah. And, um, you know, whether it be marketing or just using yeah. tech or whatever it is, uh, there's, 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 we're, we're, we're really looking for people to yeah. add another layer of uh, in our communities and also, you know, helping put the culture back into agriculture. Yeah. That's what it's about. Yeah. No, awesome. Oh, that's great. Cam, Thanks so much. That for your was time. good fun. It's nice to be on the other end of the yeah microphone. Um, setup. and and everyone knows where to where to check um uh, Charlie out on uh, the Regenerative Journey podcast yep. and biodynamics courses. Go to Facebook. I think also yeah and, and it, yeah and website charliearnett.com.au. We're yep. doing um, workshops there. Um, we you know on that page we support a lot of other businesses that yep. are sort of doing good things. We're partnering. We're actually thinking about you know and and we're planning to and we're just creating partnerships with a few others a little more formally to create a platform yep. where 
and, a, and a, an opportunity for people like you who are listening to this, whether you're farming now or you want to farm and you know you you want to get into it, where you can choose to um, start your own regenerative journey with us um, by having access to some of the experts um, and the up and coming experts for all sorts of different um modalities whether yep. it's you know, biodynamics or it's natural circuits farming or it's multi-species pasture cropping whatever or whatever so yeah that's to be uh that's sort of that's in the pipeline yep. and so if i if i had that already in place cam yep. and you asked me that question before i'd say just get them a bloody website sign up and see at the next thing and let's get going you would have stopped me <laughs> babbling on for five minutes no that's stuff. good well thank you so much Cam, mate that was wonderful really enjoyed that yeah. I'm, and good on you for just bailing up yeah. there and saying let's just do this um i really enjoy um i really enjoyed that and good for you for having enthusiasm to get out and yeah. do this stuff yeah. as one of my mentors said you know you, you can be good at yeah, it's about diversity. It's about biodiversity, yep. but in diversity in business. And I know you told me what you're doing there before, and and yep. you're you know basically um, you're leasing other land, yep. and you're running cattle through there, and yep. you're doing yourself a service and them too. Yeah. And you're doing something like this, which is adding another layer yep. to what you're doing, and that's a really good thing. Trying to stack a bit and help educate as the same totally. Time, so. And you know what? I'm not an expert in anything. Yeah. But. I, I appreciate that other people have stories to tell and that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's, that's um, you know, you're not necessarily an expert in things. Yeah. You will become an expert by yep. the sounds of things. But Especially you're not, generalist. <laughs> that's it, but you're not letting that stop you from sharing what you're doing yep. and I think it's really good. Yeah. No, awesome. Well, let's get a beer and a feed. And yeah, it's a good idea. Good time. All right, guys. See you later. <laughs> see you, guys.